3.2. Know the connection between the gradients of parallel and perpendicular lines. This is part of my ultimate revision guide for further maths GCSE, and it's the coordinate geometry section. Here we have an index button that will take us back to the index of coordinate geometry, and then down here, any further maths exam questions that on this topic that I've been through, I will link down here for you to work through as practice questions. Okay, so what do we need to know? We need to be able to work out the gradients of lines that are parallel and per perpendicular to a given line. And we need to show that two lines are parallel and perpendicular using their gradients. So we need to know the connection between those things. Um, you may be able to have to use properties from different sections, 6.1 and 3.7. And we've got to move away from doing drawings. This is all going to be theoretical work. This is just using numbers and equations and things. Okay, there's three example questions I'm going to go through, so if you want to have a go through these first just to see if you can do them, and then I shall explain them if you can't in a minute. Okay, let's move on to question one. Okay, so what do we need to know about uh, gradients of parallel and perpendicular lines? Well, first of all, um, really we need to be thinking about the general equation y equals mx plus c. If you can rewrite an equation of a line in this form, then you can always work out the gradient, which is the m value, and we always can work out the y intercept, which is the c value. Now we're going to be focusing on the m value for this section. Um, and the connection between um, parallel lines is whatever this m is, it will be the same when they're parallel. So when parallel um, gradients are equal, okay, and perpendicular lines. Um, a perpendicular line to another line will have a negative reciprocal gradient. So that means that whatever this gradient is in one line, the perpendicular line's gradient will be negative, that gradient um, divided into one, so one divided by that gradient. Now if that gradient is a fraction, this is just means we turn the fraction upside down, so the reciprocating of fraction is turned upside down. If this is a whole number, like three, then this becomes minus one third. If this was a negative fraction like minus 5 over 4, then this would change it to be a positive and then 4 over 5, so we just turn it upside down. So those are the ideas we're going to use here. Let's run at these through these questions. Okay, so two straight lines to show that the lines are parallel. Now, this one is in the form that we want. Let's just rearrange it a little bit so we've got the x next to the equals, so it should look like that. So that's our gradient there. The gradient is always the number next to the x when you have y equals. This one is not in the form y equals, so we need to rearrange it. So to do that, we need to take the 6x to the other side. So we've got 2y equals minus 6x, because we've taken it to the other side, plus 1. And then we need to divide by the 2 to get y equals. y equals minus 3x plus 1 over 2 is a half. Okay, so when we're dividing by a number, we divide everything by that number. Okay, so um, since the gradient is negative 3 for both lines, they are parallel. And that's all you've got to do for parallel lines is to show they have the same gradient, the same number in front of the x when you rearrange it into the y equals format. Okay, work out the gradient of the line that is perpendicular to this line. So we need to work out the gradient of this line. And then we need to do this negative reciprocal to get the perpendicular line. So to get the gradient of this line, we need to rearrange it by taking the x over to the other side. To get minus 2x plus 6. This plus 6 isn't going to really make any difference in this question. We're just dealing with the numbers in front of the x's and y. And we need to make this y equal, so we divide by 5. So minus 2 divided by 5 is minus 2 fifths of x plus 6 divided by 5. Okay, so this is our gradient. So the gradient is minus 2 fifths. So the perpendicular gradient is going to be the negative reciprocal. So the negative sign changes. And then we turn the fraction upside down. So 5 over 2. And that's our answer. So the gradient of the perpendicular line is 5 over 2. Okay, question three. We've got three, co uh, four coordinates here, and we're going to try and show that they form a trapezium. Okay, so let's have a little think about where these are roughly. So we've got two, three. Let's plot that. So that's roughly two, three, five, eight. It's going to be up and to the right of that. So 
that's A and B. 7, 6 is going to be to the right and just below that one. And D is going to be 1, so that's coming back this way, and minus 4, so down here. So it's going to be, look like uh, roughly like this. So if we're going to prove this is a trapezium, we need to prove it has one pair of parallel sides. To do it properly, we've got to prove that these two are not parallel. So we don't want we've got to show that those are not parallel. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the gradient between A and B and the gradient between D and C. And if that's the same, then they're parallel. And then we're going to look at the gradient between A and D and B and C. And if they're not the same, they're not parallel. And therefore we have a trapezium. Okay, so let's have a look at the gradient between A and B. Okay, so going from A to B. We're going um, A to B, we're going across 3 and up 5. So if I drew a little little sketch there, we're going across 3 and up 5. So the gradient is going to be 5 divided by 3. So 5 divided by 3 for the gradient. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like to use the formula y2 minus y1. It's not needed. You just look at how far across, how far up you're going, divide them, and that's your gradient. It's a positive gradient because it's going up to the right. OK, let's have a look at the gradient of D to C. OK, so D to C, we're going from this one to this one. So we're going across 6. We're going from 1 to 7 is 6 across. And minus 4 up to 6, we'd go 4 up to 0, and then another 6 is 10. So let's draw a little sketch of that. We're going across 6 and up 10. So the gradient there is going to be 10 divided by 6, which just so happens to be 5 over 3. So therefore, AB and DC are parallel. Okay, to finish it off properly, we need to make sure that AD and BC are not parallel. And clearly, from our little sketch, it shows that they're, they're in different directions to start with. But let's just formalize that with some calculations. So let's go from uh, D to A. Um, D to A is... Um, we're going across 1 and up 7. So we've got a little diagram here, 1 and 7. So that's the gradient equals 7 divided by 1, which is just 7. And then the gradient of um, B to C is going to be, um, we're going from B 5 to 7. So we're going to cross 2 and then we're going down 2. So we're going to cross 2, down 2. Okay, so clearly that has a negative gradient, which is cross 2, well I'll just put negative, 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Therefore, D, A, and uh, B, C are not parallel. Now, we need to do that really to prove this wasn't a parallelogram. If we need to prove it's a parallelogram, if we got those two the same, then, then we'd have that proved as well. Um, so now we know that that's parallel, that's not parallel, therefore... A, B, C, D is a trapezium. And that's shown everything we need to show there. Okay, so key ideas. Um, this is this is the only really for, only real formula you need for um, coordinate geometry of straight lines. Um, there is another formula that we're going to introduce a bit later, but I very rarely use it. Um, the idea here that if parallel, the gradients are equal. When you've got it in this format, you look at this number M and it tells you they're equal. Perpendicular lines, we do negative reciprocals. So we, if this is a whole number, we turn it upside down. I do one divided by that number and change the sign. If it's a fraction, we turn it upside down. Okay, so that's uh, 3.2.